Are you looking for a new way to cook up chicken breast? How about an old way instead? I've taken a classic and I've reduced the bites, points, calories, and macros. This is my take on chicken divan or chicken divan or chicken divan, however you like to say it. And no matter how you say it, this is delicious. So if you'd like to see how this is done, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I'm a home cook and amateur baker, and I'm here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of mine technically, but it's been around since the 1940s. I am doing my version of Chicken Devon. Now, some people call it divan, some people call it divan, but however you pronounce it, it's delicious. Now the name comes from the hotel where it was originally served. It was created by a chef at that hotel, but he created it for a contest. And once it won that contest, the hotel restaurant decided to put it on the menu. And the restaurant was called the Devon Parisienne, and it was in the Chatham Hotel in New York City. This was all in the 1940s, but it really became popular in the 1960s and 70s. Some of you may remember hearing the name, some of you may have had it before. But it's kind of fallen off the map a little bit, and I thought I would bring it back in a lightened up version, of course. Now this is usually made, at least the original version, with blanched broccoli, poached chicken breasts that are then chopped up, and also a bechamel or a Mornay sauce. Mornay is when a bechamel has cheese added to it. Over the years, it's been adapted to make it a little more accessible to the home cook, and now I'm making it a little more accessible to those on a weight loss journey. All right, so enough background. Let's go over the ingredients. I have here my cooking spray, of course. I'm going to spray a 9 by 13 pan, but I'm also going to need that for the cheese that is going to go on top. You know that's my trick for helping fat-free cheeses to melt more naturally, more like a regular cheese, is to spray it with a little cooking spray. Here I have a 10 and a half ounce can of 98% fat-free cream of chicken soup. And that is going to be the base. It's kind of replacing the bechamel from the original recipe. Here I have a pound and a half of chicken breast that I have cut up. And you can see that it is raw. I didn't cook it beforehand. Now I will let you know as we move along that you can do that. You don't have to prepare the broccoli or the chicken the way I'm going to do it. And I will give you a little simpler version if you'd prefer that. But I really think the way I'm going to prepare it adds a little more depth of flavor. So that's why I prefer doing it this way. Here I have one pound of broccoli florets that have been trimmed and cut up into bite-sized pieces. I cut off most of whatever stock is there. So it weighed a pound when I bought it, but it's probably about two thirds of that right now or three quarters because of all the trimming I had to do. But you wanna start off with one pound of broccoli florets, broccoli crowns essentially. I have here one half cup of panko breadcrumbs and that might look like it's in a bowl that's a little too big for just a half a cup, but that's because I am gonna be doing some mixing in there. So I wanted a larger bowl. Here I have one tablespoon of light butter. I'm using the, I can't believe it's not butter light, but any one that you prefer is good. I'm going to be melting that just for like maybe 30 seconds, if that, and mixing that in with the panko breadcrumbs. And that's going to be part of our topic. 
I have here three quarters cup of non-fat Greek yogurt, and that is at room temperature just so that it can combine with everything. And also because when I put it in the oven, I don't want it to be too cold. I want it to be closer to room temperature so that way there's not a discrepancy in the oven between the cold yogurt and the hot oven where it may curdle because of that discrepancy. So the closer it is to room temperature when it goes in, the better it will be. I have here one cup of fat-free cheddar cheese and that is divided. I have a half a cup in each of those bowls. One half cup is going to go into the mix that we're making and one half cup is gonna go on the top. I have here one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Now, if you happen to have dry mustard on hand, you could use a half teaspoon of that in place of the Dijon. And I have one half teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of garlic powder, one half teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of black pepper. So those are all of the ingredients that we need. So let me shuffle a few things around and we will get started. All right, so I have a large skillet here that I am heating over medium high heat and it is at the right temperature. I have sprayed it with some cooking spray. Now this is where I go off the rails from the original. As I said, the broccoli can be blanched, which means you put it in some hot water for about two to three minutes just to get it started. And then you would add it into the rest of the dish and you could do your chicken ahead of time. You can poach your chicken if you want, like the original, or use a rotisserie chicken, that's your call. But I'm going to do it this way and just add a little bit of flavor. But first, we need to start the broccoli. So I'm just gonna add this to the hot pan. And that is exactly what you wanna hear, that sizzle. So I wanna make sure that they are in an even layer and they're in mostly bite-sized pieces. Some are a little bit larger, but it doesn't matter as long as they're fairly bite-sized pieces. Now what I'm gonna do is let this sit and cook here for two minutes without touching it. When I prepare broccoli as a side, this is always how I do it because this gives it some caramelization and brings out some of the natural sugars and definitely enhances the flavor of the broccoli. So the way I'm doing the broccoli for this dish is the way I always cook it for any side dish, even if I'm just doing it by itself. And you do wanna be using a skillet that you have a lid for because we are going to need to cover this. So make sure you have a lid and make sure you have it ready. I also have a large bowl here that I'm gonna put the broccoli into once it is done. Okay, so I've picked one up. You can see there is some slight coloration. It's not burning. It's just getting some caramelization, what they call the Maillard reaction, where charring it slightly brings out those flavors. So now that there's a little color on there, I am going to flip them and try to get a little color on the other side. And you can do it by hand if you need to. I usually do, but you have to make sure that you are doing it carefully. All right, so now that the majority of them are flipped, what I'm going to do is just throw in about two tablespoons of water and immediately cover it. Now what that's gonna do is steam our broccoli. We're gonna let it sit here for two minutes again, not touching it, and then I'll be back. All right, so it's been about two minutes of steaming. I'm gonna remove the lid carefully so that I don't get any steam burns and just stir that around a little bit. And right now it's kind of at that crisp, tender state. And if you wanted it a little softer, you could go a little further, but I find this to be the perfect texture for broccoli. So now I'm going to just remove that from the pan into the bowl here. We turn the pan to the heat and spray it once again with my cooking spray. Now I'm gonna add in the chicken and what I'm gonna do is let it sit for a minute, toss it, let it sit for a minute just to get some color on all sides. Then I'm just gonna to toss it on occasion for two minutes and then remove it. So now I'm gonna add in the chicken and I'm going to spread that out into an even layer like I did with the broccoli and just let this sit here untouched for one minute. Okay, so it's been about a minute. I'm going to just kind of flip those over as well as I can so that the uncooked side is now on the bottom. Some of them may be sticking together because they are kind of close together. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is let this sit for another minute without touching. 
Okay, so it's been about another minute. Now I just want to break up any that seem to be sticking together. Stir them around a little bit. We're not looking to fully cook them because they are going to be in the oven for a bit. So we don't have to worry about them being fully cooked at this stage, but we do want that caramelization on the outside to really boost that flavor. Now this is definitely a departure from the original recipe. So as I said, if you prefer going with the original, you could poach your chicken ahead of time and cut it up. You could get a rotisserie chicken and cut it up. You don't have to go through all of this, but I honestly think this is a little easier than having to poach the chicken and blanch the broccoli. Okay, so that's been about two minutes. I'm now gonna turn off the burner. That's all we needed the burner and the skillet for. And I'm going to add the chicken in with the broccoli. And I'll just give that a little toss just to get things started in the bowl. All right, so while that's sitting there resting, we are going to mix up our sauce. And that's going to be the cream of chicken soup. And make sure you scrape out everything you can get out of that can. I figure you're paying the bites and points for it, why not use it? The yogurt, Dijon mustard, the onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And I'm just going to whisk this all together into a homogenous mixture. Make sure I get those spices incorporated throughout our sauce. Now it will be rather thick, so don't worry about that. And then I'm going to add in half a cup of the fat-free cheddar cheese and just stir that through. Okay, and once that cheese is incorporated, I'm gonna bring in our bowl with our chicken and broccoli and add this right in here with that. And then I'm going to toss this through so that all of the chicken and broccoli is coated in our sauce. And you wanna get everything as evenly distributed as you can so that you don't have any dry pieces when you put it into the casserole dish. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my nine by 13 baking dish and just pour all of this right in there. There. And again, scrape down the bowl to get all of that goodness out of the bowl and into your dish. Now we're just going to evenly spread this out and you can see if broccoli is too clumped in one area, you can move it around, get things distributed as you need it. But that looks pretty good right there. So now I'm gonna take the other half cup of the fat-free cheese and just sprinkle that on top. And again, you wanna go as evenly as you can, but don't stress yourself too much out about it because it will melt. And I'm going to spritz that with a little of the cooking spray just to, as I said, help that to melt. Okay, now just let me melt this tablespoon of light butter. Okay, that took only about 15 seconds and there are still a few little pieces of butter that are intact. So I'm just gonna stir those through so the residual heat will melt them and toss that in with our breadcrumbs. And then just using a fork or a little spoon, just stir that around to get that butter spread throughout. And this is just going to give a kind of buttery flavor to it. Some people I know use like crumbled up Ritz crackers. Obviously, I'm not doing that, but I suppose you could do that and just change the bites or points or calories or macros. And you wouldn't need to add the butter because those crackers are already buttery. But I am using panko because I like the texture of that, although you could use regular breadcrumbs as well if you want. But I do like the texture of the panko. So now I'm just is going to take the breadcrumb mixture and spread that over the top again as evenly as you can and I did this with both a quarter cup and a half a cup and it, they were both the same bites and points total so I figured why not go for a little extra crunch and go for the full half cup you could reduce it down if you wanted, especially if you were using, say, Ritz crackers and you wanted to use some, but not use a lot of them. That is also an option. Now, this is going into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes until the cheese is melted, the breadcrumbs are lightly browned, and you will see some bubbling around the edges. So about 20 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, there we have our chicken divan, chicken divan, however you care to pronounce it. And you can see that it is bubbling around the edges, the cheese is melted, and there is just a little bit of color on the breadcrumbs. If you wanted a little bit more, you could set the broiler 
but just a light golden color is what I'm looking for. Now you can serve this a number of ways. You can serve it over rice, pasta, biscuits, potatoes, whatever you feel like putting it on. You could even maybe do a baked potato, use a little bit less than a serving and fill up a baked potato, that would be delicious. But that is all there is to making chicken divan. Now the way I've written it up, this will serve six people. You could do it for four, but I'm doing it as six because I'm also going to be serving ours tonight, I think with rice. I was thinking pasta, then rice, one of the two, but I'm going to be serving it with something a little higher in bites and points than this is. Now for one sixth of this dish, it is only going to be two Better Balance Bites or Old Blue Points. I'm on the Healthy Better Balance plan, which is equivalent to the old WW Blue plan, which is somewhere around their current plan. I don't know exactly where. Some things are a little more, some things are a little less. So you can figure out based on the Blue plan where you might fall. Now, if you were following calories, the calories for one sixth of this would be 274. And if you are following macros, the fat would be 5.4 grams. Saturated fat would be 1.5 grams. Protein would be 33.4 grams. Carbs would be 25.1 grams. Fiber would be 5.6 grams. And sugars would also be 5.6 grams for one sixth of this casserole dish. Now, as I said, you can adjust up or down for the servings. If say you were doing them on baked potatoes, you may only want about an eighth of this. So feel free to play around with it and eat it as you like. Even on toast, it would be great on toast. They used to serve it with toast points, which I think is just toast cut in the diagonal. But anyway, toast would be great. English muffins would be good. You have many options. And one of those options is to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video, like the kitchen tour that I did this past Sunday. If you want to see what else is going on behind the scenes, go check that out. I'll card that here and link it down below. Also down in the description box, you will find the recipe for this. I will link directly to this on my blog as well as to the blog itself. Also down there is my Amazon storefront. If I've used anything you're interested in, it may be there. Also, my social media is down there, my Instagram and three Facebook groups that I am part of. So check out that description box for all sorts of information. Okay, this is cooled down slightly and I am ready to eat. I just need to decide if I'm making rice or pasta. Tough call but I hope you'll be making that call yourself very soon. And until next time, bye.